Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Ray Milland and Colleen Townsend in It Happens Every Spring. Tonight, the Lux Radio Theater comes to you from Hollywood as usual, but your producer speaks to you from New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. For weeks, excitement in baseball's big league pennant races has been at fever pitch. Yesterday, however, the New York Yankees and the Brooklyn Dodgers were crowned champions after two of the toughest fights in years. And Wednesday, the great national sporting classic, the World Series, gets underway. So tonight, the Lux Radio Theater, quite appropriately, presents a delightful story about baseball. It's the 20th Century Fox picture, It Happens Every Spring. Heading our cast is Ray Milland in his original role. And with him is the charming Colleen Townsend, who lends romance to the big leagues. Baseball is a great American institution, as is our own Lux Toilet Soap. And in Hollywood, the big league for beautiful women, Lux Soap has a championship batting average. Nine out of ten screen stars use it. Now, for your enjoyment, here is Act One of It Happens Every Spring. Starring Ray Milland as Vernon Simpson and Colleen Townsend as Debbie. It's a fine spring afternoon, and on the campus of a Midwestern college, the daughter of the college president is walking with her favorite professor. Oh, yes, by far her favorite professor. But what is it, Vernon? Don't you feel well, darling? Well, well, you're acting so strangely. I am. And what was the idea, bringing your portable radio to class, tuning in the baseball game in the middle of your lecture? Well, Debbie, I I wanted to find out how St. Louis was doing. Now, why? Oh, I don't know. Just an impulse, I suppose. I'm not that interested in baseball. I didn't know you were even remotely interested in baseball. Oh, Vernon, you've become so, well, so terribly vague lately. Oh, not about you, Debbie. Why, you're almost everything I ever think about. Almost. What else can I say? Something definite, Vernon. Something positive. About us. Oh, but that's been out of the question. As a professor of chemistry, I make barely enough to live on. And your father, well, he's made it quite clear that for anyone in my financial situation to even discuss but marriage... Vernon... And he's right. Any man who thinks of getting married on an income like mine is a menace to society. But just wait until your father finds out. Finds out what, dear? My experiment in the laboratory. Oh, Vernon. Vernon, you mean you've done it? It, It's finished? Just about. And I haven't told you the best part, Debbie. My nitrocyclohexane compound will have great commercial value. You'll finish your postgraduate work in two months. We get married, Debbie. We'll buy a house, maybe even a car. Oh, Vernon. But... But who's going to pay you all this money? The Norworth Laboratories. For years, they've been trying to develop a chemical that will keep insects away from wood. A biophobic, they call it. Well, they seem to think that my compound is the very thing they've been searching for. Vernon Simpson, the man who discovered the biophobic. Oh, darling, I'm so proud of you. Of course, we can't expect any positive results right away, but we... Hey, wait a minute. Hmm? Look, over there in back of the lab building, they're playing baseball. Well, the boys play baseball there every day. They do? Oh, well, I guess I've been too busy to notice. Well, you're not going to stop to notice him now. Come on, Vernon, we're going to that lab. Debbie. Debbie, look. It's even better than I thought. Oh, it is? Look, the white precipitate. Hallelujah, it's there. Oh, Debbie, you just don't realize what this means. Right here, right here in this flask is the result of five years of work. That flask holds my fortune, Debbie. It holds you and money and everything I ever hoped to... Vernon! No. No, it couldn't happen. It couldn't. A uh, uh, baseball. They knocked it through the window. Oh. Oh, Vernon, look. It smashed half your equipment. Give me a rag, darling. I'll... Oh, let it alone. Well, Vernon... Don't you understand? It smashed, destroyed everything. No, I, I don't understand. You still have your formula. Now, how long would it take to make another solution? How long? Why, just one of those compounds alone took five weeks to crystallize, and they're all in sequence. I can't make the second till I finish the first. Oh, darling, I'm so sorry. Why, I ran some of those reactions 30 and 40 times before I could get enough stuff to make the next step. 
Now I've got to start from scratch again. Do it all over, step by step. It'll take months. And that wonderful precipitate. Isn't there any way you could filter it out and save it? That liquid? Why, it's just a hodgepodge of compounds. I couldn't even figure out what's in it, let alone filter it. Well, I suppose I'd better clean up this mess. Can't I help? I'd rather you run along, Debbie. Vernon. It's just another bad break. That's there's nothing you can say, nothing I can say. Now, darling, you mustn't feel that oh, way. Oh, Debbie, please, not now. I'm just not up to it. All right, Vernon. I'll, I'll see you later. It isn't fair. It just isn't right. Just because some kids knock a baseball through a window. Why my window? Why couldn't it have been... That's funny. What sort of a baseball is this? Oh, now, wait a minute. Now I'm starting to see things. But it's doing it again. This baseball is allergic to wood. What's happened here? What's happened? Notes regarding amazing reaction of baseball. Baseball had become saturated in mixture of chemicals. As I started a clean laboratory, placed baseball on metal table. Baseball started to roll down the table. On table was wooden filing box. As baseball rolled toward box, it suddenly veered off, away from wooden box. A repeated process with all sorts of wooden objects. It appears that chemical has made baseball repellent to anything made of wood. Have salvaged enough liquid to fill two pint bottles and I'm arranging very interesting experiment for tomorrow morning. You sent for us, Professor Simpson? Oh, yes. Come in, come in. Well, it seems you gentlemen are doing rather sadly in organic chemistry. You're aware of that. Oh, yes, Professor. Yeah, I do. Well, I understand you both play baseball. Varsity pitcher and catcher, right? Well, I I guess maybe baseball's been taking up too much of our time. No doubt. Well, I'd hate to flunk you. You see, I used to play a little baseball myself. Oh, you did, huh? Oh, just a little. We had sort of a sandlot team back home, and then, of course, in the army. Anyway, I thought I'd better give you boys a little tutoring, see if we can't improve your grades. I say, that's that's sure swell, I think. And in return, I was wondering if you'd do something for me and keep it strictly confidential. Oh, we'd be glad to, Professor. All right, then meet me on the baseball field tomorrow morning at 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock? In the morning? You heard me. Oh, and bring a lot of baseballs. Now, sit down. I'll try to teach you a little chemistry. Well, good morning, boys. I see you're right on time, exactly five o'clock. Yeah, a.m. Well, I don't want anyone to see us. Now, here's what I'd like to do. Isabel, take your bat and stand at home plate. Okay, Professor. Schmidt, put on your catcher's mask. I'll try tossing in a few, okay? Oh, sure, sure, okay. So this is why he got us up at 5 o'clock, so he could play pitcher. But he can't really be nuts or they wouldn't let him teach. Well, it's one way of passing chemistry. Hey, shut up now. We got a humor. Now, if you're ready, Isabel, and don't hesitate to hit the ball. Oh, don't worry. I'll hit it. All ready, Professor. Right down the groove. Well, here you go. Ah, oh, that's some hit, Isabel. Nice work. Ah, oh, never mind, Professor. We'll get him on this next one. Feed him another curve. Right. Look at that ball go. Oh, too bad I didn't have an outfielder in my class. Why, it's over the fence. Yeah, isn't it? Are you nuts? I told you to humor him. Start striking out. Strike out nothing. What does he get off thinking he can pitch? Come on, Professor. Let's have another one. I, um, I'll try a fast one. Oh, <laughs> Don't let it bother you, Professor. You're just warming up. Then you don't mind if I try a few more? You throw them, I'll hit them. Use your bean this time. Bunt one. Okay, okay. Uh, give him the old whizzer, Professor. Right over the old plate. Ready, Isabel? Don't worry, I'm ready. Wow, did you see the hop on that ball? Hey, that's a regular dipsy doodle you got there, Professor. How'd you do it? Result of a great deal of scientific research. Okay, give him another. Let's see the old pepper in there now. Right down the old groove now, Professor. Well, missed it again. Wow, that's making it hop in there, Prof. Old boy, old boy. He certainly swung at it, didn't he? Hit this one, will you? Now he thinks you're faking. Who's faking? I'll try a nice slow curve, Isabel. And hit it, will you? Hit it. 
Well, how do you like that? Calls his pitch and strikes them out. Now, let's see, Isabel. You hit three consecutive pitches, then you missed three. Statistically, therefore, I've obtained all the information possible. Unless, of course, I pitched several hundred more balls. Thank you, gentlemen, and good day. Statistics yet? Hey, how do you like that, Carl? that the test was eminently successful. Of course, what Isabel and Schmidt did not know was that before making the last three pitches, I had placed in my pitcher's glove a little pad of cotton soaked with a chemical solution, and that in my glove was a small hole allowing contact of the chemical with the baseball. Well, I'd better call on Dr. Greenleaf right away. <laughs> What emergency? I don't understand. Well, a wonderful opportunity has just presented itself, Dr. Greenleaf. It may not work out, but I'd like a leave of absence starting immediately. Leave of absence? But uh, for how long? I don't know, sir. Indefinitely? I can't explain it, Dr. Greenleaf. That, 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 that is, I can, but scientifically I can't explain it at all. You mean it has something to do with your experiment? Uh, yes, sir, but unless I get a chance to demonstrate it... Demonstrations, it... eh? Uh, lectures of some kind? Well, no, not exactly. <sighs> Well, what are you going to do? Uh, Take it to some commercial laboratory like the one you mentioned? Uh, uh, what was it now? A Norworth laboratory, sir. Well, uh, then uh, why is the time indefinite? Well, Dr. Greenleaf, if I don't leave immediately, I'm going to miss my train. All right, Vernon. Go on. Go ahead and catch your train. I'll have Dr. Fuller take over your class. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, I guess Debbie isn't awake yet, is she? I hardly think so. Well, will you tell her I said goodbye and that she'll hear from me soon? And thanks again, Dr. Greenleaf. <laughs> Taxi, taxi. Where to, mister? Uh, the baseball park. And hurry, please. What's your rush, mister? The game don't start till this afternoon. Well, I didn't come all the way to St. Louis to watch a baseball game. Take me to the manager's office. Jimmy Dolan, huh? Hey, you a friend of his chum? Well, I hope to be. And be careful of that suitcase. There's some bottles in it. But, Mr. Dolan, as manager of the St. Louis baseball team, this, this can mean a great deal to now you. Now, look. Look, I'm trying to be nice, see? Number one, I don't see anybody on days when we're playing games. Number two, I got to get out there and watch bat and practice. And number three... I'm not asking for favors, Mr. Dolan. I'm trying to do you a favor. Then do it. Get out of my office. But you need a pitcher very badly. Why, I can win the pennant for you, and that's no idle boast. It's a simple scientific fact. I can win 30 games for you. Just 30 games? Is that all? Well, no, no. 30 is just the minimum, I suppose. Oh, I... no, no. You're not very screwy, are you? Don't you know there ain't more than a dozen pitchers ever won 30 games in a season? Of course I do, and I can tell you their names if you like. Never mind. Just... Well, all I want to do is show you what can you lose. My breakfast is all. Oh. Hey, Mac, take this guy away. Yes, sir, Mr. Dolan. Don't hurt his arm, though. He thinks he's Waller Johnson. You're being very stupid, Mr. Dolan. With a chance to win the pennant right in your... Get him out of here! Come on now, pal. Be a nice guy. You're annoying Mr. Dolan. Well, if Mr. Dolan would do less shouting and more thinking, he'd probably... what's all the rumpus, Jimmy? Oh, I got another crank in here. Thinks he's a pitcher. Thinks he can win 30 games. You don't say. Where's he from? He won't tell me! You, I take it, and Mr. Stone? That's right. I appeal to your intelligence, Mr. Stone, as the owner of a baseball club. Well? I'm perfectly rational and willing to prove any claims I make. All I want is a chance to demonstrate my pitching. How do these characters get in here? I walked in, Mr. Stone. And I'm about to walk out again. And when I do, the pennant walks right out the door with me. Come on, Sonny Jim. Take your pennant and trot along. Take a good look at me, Mr. Stone. All the other owners can't be pigheads. You'll see me later in the season. For just a minute. So I'm pigheaded, am I? You walk in here off the street and think you can win 30 games and just because I... don't I... think so, Mr. Stone. I know it. Know it? Well, I have never met such conceit in my life. I told you he's a crackpot. You talk to him, boss. I'm going out to batting practice. Batting practice, huh? I think we ought to teach this fellow a good lesson. Teach him anything you like, but let me get out of here. We're going with you, Jimmy. Let him pitch to the boys. Let him what? Young man, you're going to have your wish. And you're going to get the humiliation of your arrogant young life. Oh, before we go, there's the questions of terms, of course. Terms? Uh, yes, terms. <laughs> Mister, I gotta hand it to you. Uh, thank you. Now, I shall want $1,000 for every game I win. Otherwise, not a penny. And when I win a game, I am to be paid promptly. I need the money. Now I've heard everything. <laughs> Take him out there, Jimmy. Put the top of the batting order up. Oh, I'm really going to enjoy this. Terms. $1,000. Holy Moses. It ain't my idea, Monk. It's his Mr. Stone. Give him a uniform, he said. That guy's a pitcher. 
But he ain't got a prayer, Jimmy. Look at him warming up. Well, get him over here. Let him start pitching. And make sure he leaves that uniform when I throw him out on his ear. Okay, you. Dolan says you can start pitching now. Oh, thank you. That's fine. Look, let me tell you, kiddo, this baseball racket ain't so artsy like maybe you read about. It's got its crummy side, too. Dirty trains all the time, cheap hotels, umpires. It'll be a change, though. I'm rather looking forward to it. Well, don't. You want to talk to him, Jimmy? No! I'll catch him, Jimmy. Catch what? They're going to hit every pitch. All right, you guys, come on. Top of the batting order. Come on, kid. Let's show him what you got. Now get out of the park, Johnson. Hey, what happened? Must have been an optical illusion. Let me see you throw that one again. Hey, Monk, what's this guy got anyway? I don't know. He didn't have nothing when he was warming up. Now he's got to hop like Barnum Swee. Hey, you, come on, just throw it and duck. Come on, throw something. <laughs> this is getting monotonous. <laughs> me and him is playing catch. Nice going, kid. Keep it up. Why, this is incredible, Jimmy. He's pitched to eight batters and struck out six. Yeah, that's right, Mr. Stone. You sure taught him a lesson, all right. But what's he got? I can't figure it out. The ball rides up as big as a lemon pie. And just when you get ready to murder it, it jumps away. <laughs> hey, Mark, bring that guy over here. He doesn't look like a pitcher. He doesn't even throw like a pitcher. All he does is strike them out. Hey, you, come here, come here. Say, what's your name anyway? Oh, oh, I hadn't thought of it. <laughs> Hadn't thought of your name? Well, try hard, kid. Try hard. Well, it's, um, it's Kelly. Oh, Kelly, huh? Hmm? Well, that's the first encouraging thing you've said. Uh, okay, hang around. Oh, you mean we are ready to talk about the term? I ain't ready to talk at all, see? It depends upon what happens this afternoon. What's this afternoon? Chicago, that's what. We play Chicago this afternoon. Now, get him out of here. <laughs> And this morning, Mr. Dolan allowed me to participate in the batting practice. I again concealed a little pad of cotton inside my glove, saturated with the formula, and had no difficulty in striking out most of the batters. I find it a source of great amazement as I watch the ball evade the bat. The players seem to have a similar reaction. But my real test will come this afternoon, if Mr. Dolan allows me to pitch against Chicago. No one, of course, has the slightest suspicion that my skill as a pitcher is due almost entirely to the chemical formula. I must exercise every precaution that no After trailing St. Louis 4-7, to seven, the Chicago team has staged a ninth-inning rally and tied up the ball game. Manager Jimmy Dolan's going to put in a new pitcher. I can't tell you who he is. His name isn't even on the scorecard. But he better be good. The bases are loaded and there's nobody out. You heard me, Kelly. Get in there and pitch. Me? Yes, you. Come on, kids. Start steaming them in. I got a feeling we ain't going to have much time. Oh, about my contract, Mr. Dolan. If I win this game, it counts for me. I expect to get paid. I don't pay you. Go talk to Stone. Now? No, no. There's a ball game going on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Hey, you. Umpire. Who is he putting in, Monk? Who's a clown? We don't need no more clowns with you around, sweetheart. Guy's name is Kelly. Attention, please. Kelly, now pitching for St. Louis. And believe Kelly, me, if there ever was a scared-looking rookie, Kelly is it. I wonder what's in Dolan's mind, putting Kelly in on a spot like this. And if you want to hear what the St. Louis fans think... Well, Kelly's taking his warm-up pitches. And now Monk Lanigan, the catcher, goes out to the mound to talk to him. Look, kid, just take it easy. Just try and get that ball over the plate, huh? It's my big opportunity. I've got to get it over the plate. Just remember, I'm all alone back there, and they don't let me use no stepladder. Baker, second base, now batting for Chicago. Hey, Mutt, where'd Dolan find that hooligan? Joplin High School? Face, get a hit off him, Baker. Then make with the jokes. Okay, Kelly, let's go, kid. Great! Nice going, kid. Do you like me, dude? Hey, that baby, Kelly. Do you like me? exhibitions of relief pitching we've ever seen. With the bases loaded and nobody out, this unknown rookie pitcher struck out the side. And St. Louis went on to win the ball game 8-7. St. Louis 8 runs the 
Father, where are you? We're in here. What is it, Debbie? I've heard from him from Vernon. And look what he sent me. An engagement ring. Vernon? Something wrong somewhere. Why, a diamond like that must have cost... Now, Father, please. When Vernon left here four days ago, I assumed he was going to the Norworth Laboratories. And you know as well as I do, we never got there. That's why the police are searching for him, dear. Well, well, what does he say in that letter? <laughs> He's so sweet. He's upset because he didn't get to say goodbye to me. But where is he? Well, he says, I know you will have faith in me and do what I ask without asking why I ask it. Oh, well, that's Vernon, all right. He even writes double talk. Mm. Oh, and then he says he hasn't disappeared as the newspaper claims. Oh, but he has. Please call the police and tell them to stop their search at once. I cannot overemphasize the urgency of this. Why, that in itself is suspicious. He's tangled himself up in some... Now, let me finish the letter, Father. My associates are rather rough and ready. Well, he practically admits but it. But their peculiar skill is a constant source of astonishment. Skill at what, dear? I don't know. The work is strenuous and exciting... But the financial rewards are quite fantastic. Yes, they must be. That ring. Mm, Vernon's mixed up with some kind of a racket. Oh, That's now, what it Father, is. don't jump at conclusions. Well, he certainly got his leave of absence under false pretenses. I can't forgive him for that. Well, I'm sure we'll know all about it very soon. No, no, I don't think so, Mother. He says I won't hear from him again for months. But why not? Well, he, he says it would be too risky. Risky? Oh, dear, this is all very strange and frightening. The box, the ring came in. It's labeled Marks and Company. Mm-hmm. In St. Louis. Well, I'm going to St. Louis tomorrow. I'll take it to the store and find out exactly no, what it... No, no, Mother, but you won't. why not? Well, well, because I don't care if it's glass or not. I'm going to wear Vernon's ring. Very good, Kelly. Hello, Mr. Dolan. What's the matter with you guys? Don't you know the train leaves in five minutes? What you want us to do, Jimmy? Get here early and polish the engine? <laughs> Some meat in the back again? Uh, no, not now, thank you. Well, me and the boys were just talking about the guy they're putting up against us in Chicago tomorrow. Well, I'm ski. You ain't scared of him, are you? Well, he's still got plenty of stuff. Nah, last week the bums knocked him all over the lot. Just wait till tomorrow. We'll kill him. I'd sure like to knock him off. Well, come on, guys, come on, get on the train. Now, just a minute, Mother, and I'll calm down. Now, now, where did you say you're phoning from? Right here, dear, from the railroad station. And I tell you, I saw Vernon, not five minutes ago. Oh, well, well, what did he say? Well, how could I talk to him? He was with a lot of men. Oh, very tough-looking, dear, all of them. A, a lot of men? Debbie, I'm afraid they're gangsters. Oh, now, Mother. But you should have heard what they said. They're going to Chicago to knock a man off, and they're going to kill him. Oh, oh you must be wrong, Mother. Oh, it, it may have looked like him, but I know it couldn't be Vernon. Well, my train's leaving, dear. I'll see you at dinner. Well, yes, Mother. Goodbye. Oh, Vernon. A gangster. Oh, it, it couldn't have been you, Vernon. It, it just couldn't. In a few moments, we'll bring you Act Two of It Happens Every Spring. And now, here's Libby Collins, our Hollywood reporter. What is it tonight, Libby? Romance? Comedy? Both, Mr. Kennedy. There's a new picture, 20th Century Fox's Everybody Does It. A delightful comedy with a dash of romance. And if it doesn't put everyone who sees it in a wonderful frame of mind, I'll be surprised. There's certainly a happy combination of talent in the picture. Celeste Holm as a career-minded wife who wants to be a concert singer. And Paul Douglas as the husband who tries to discourage her but doesn't know how. Until Linda Darnell shows him. Linda plays an operatic siren and does it in sparkling style. You know, it seems to me in Everybody Does It that Linda Darnell looks even more gorgeous than usual. What really luscious beauty she has. And one of her greatest charms, Libby... Is that dazzling luxe complexion? Yes, John. Linda has one of the loveliest complexions in Hollywood. Naturally, she gives her skin the best possible care. Like nine out of ten other screen stars, she finds luxe soap facials really work. Tests by skin specialists prove that daily luxe soap care does wonders for the skin. In three out of four cases... Complexions improved in a short time. Lux soap facials are quick and easy, too. You just smooth the creamy, fragrant lather well in, rinse, and pat with a soft towel to dry. That's all. But see what fresh, new loveliness it gives the skin. There's a beauty hint from Hollywood for women everywhere. 
Be sure to try this fine product of Lever Brothers Company for your precious complexion. You'll be delighted with Lux Toilet Soap's gentle, protecting care. Act Two of It Happens Every Spring, starring Ray Milland as Vernon Simpson and Colleen Townsend as Debbie. Thanks to his chemical formula, Professor Vernon Simpson has become the ace pitcher of the St. Louis baseball team. In Pittsburgh, Brooklyn, Philadelphia, and Boston, under the name of Kelly, Vernon has proved himself the strikeout king of the league. Now, in New York, he finds that manager Jimmy Dolan has assigned him a roommate, Monk Lanigan, the catcher. So, that's how come I'm sharing the room with you, Kelly. They uh, kind of want me to keep an eye on you. Dolan thinks you're somewhat of a screwball or something. Are you, Kelly? Why, no, Monk. Quite the opposite. Everything I do is perfectly logical. Hey, is that your girl's picture up there in the dresser? Uh, yes, yes, it is. Hot stuff. A uh, sweet-looking kid, though. Uh, what's her name, kid? Oh, you wouldn't know her. Cagey, huh? Okay. Hey, what's this stuff? This. Oh, no, bo- Monk, Monk, no, no. Put that bottle down. Oh, what's eating you, Kelly? All I did it's, was... Uh, it's just hair tonic. Hair tonic? Yes, a special prescription. It's very hard to get. The druggist was a friend of mine. Hair tonic, huh? Yeah, seems to done you a lot of good. Oh, yes. Yes, it's done me a world of good. Where are you really from, Kelly? Uh, why all the mystery? Well, it's um, it's my girl's father, Monk. If he ever finds out, I'll lose my girl and my job and everything. Finds out what? What I'm doing. I didn't even think I could do it, but I am. And what I'm doing isn't what he thinks I'm doing at all. Come again? Well, you see, I'm getting the one thing he wants me to have that I haven't got, money, by doing the one thing he's most against. You see? Uh, leave it go, kid. Quit trying. <laughs> well, you better get some sleep. You're pitching tomorrow, you know. No, I'm confident I'll win, Monk. Mm, don't be too sure. I'll try to figure out what you should feed those New Yorks. Oh, but you know I've only got one real pitch, the one with the hop. Yeah, I keep forgetting. Uh, go on to sleep. Rookie pitches no hit, no run game. Kelly hits Hall of Fame for St. Louis. New York floored by pitch that hop. Kid, I was just talking to Dolan. He still thinks you're nuts. Well, I suppose my conduct does seem strange at times. You pitch a no-hit game this afternoon, and when them reporters and photographers come, you run away and hide. That ain't normal, Kelly. But I told you, Monk, I don't want any publicity. But you gotta talk to those guys. Them newspaper fellas can ruin you. Exactly. One recognizable picture of me in the newspapers, and I am ruined. Well, I'll just see to it that I don't pitch any more no-hit games at all. You'll just see to it... Kelly, you mustn't talk like that. Then forget about the reporters. Well, cheer up, kid. This time tomorrow, we'll be back in St. Louis. Well, that's your home, ain't it? It's too close to home. Excuse me, Monk. I think I'll turn in. Hey, Kelly, come on, come on, open up. And good morning to you, Mr. Dolan. Where's Kelly? Uh, he went downtown, but don't worry... He just said he had something very personal to do downtown. Well, don't let him forget he's pitching this afternoon. Three days in our home park and we haven't won a game. We will today. Hey, what do you think you're doing? I'm getting dressed. I'm brushing my hair. Since when do you use hair tonic? This this bottle? Oh, this ain't mine. It's Kelly's. Just thought I'd bother you a little. Holy Moses! Take it easy. Kelly won't care. You big ape, look at your hair there. Look, look in the mirror. Huh. My hair... It's standing straight up. It's vibrating. <laughs> but he uses it, Kelly. Says he uses it all the time. Let me smell that bottle. Well, it ain't booze. That's all I was worried about. Me hair. It's still standing up. Just, just sort of waiting. Well, see that Kelly's in shape to pitch. Give his arm a good massage and make sure he takes a nap. Oh, it's you, Mr. Kelly. I didn't recognize you, sir. Dark glasses and all? Well, I came in to pay the balance on that diamond ring I bought. Here you are. Thank you, sir. Uh, did the lady like the ring? I don't know. I hope so. Oh. Well, would you care to look at some wedding rings? Uh, no, thank you. Not until the end of the season. I mean, not until October. I hope you won't forget us, Mr. Kelly. Good day, sir. Vernon. Oh, Vernon, it's you. Debbie. Meeting you on the street after all these weeks. And, and what were you doing in there? 
In that jewelry store. Well, if you must know, no. I... No, don't tell me. I know already, Vernon. Oh, I read about what happened in Chicago. You did? But you're not going to try the same thing here. They've got guards and policemen. Debbie! And don't pretend you're so innocent. Besides, Mother heard you plan the whole thing in the station. You and your Confederates held up that jewelry store in Chicago. And now you're here looking this one over. Debbie, but that's absurd. Did you or did you not go to Chicago? Well, yes, yes, I... I... Now, you ask me to trust you. To believe in you. And you do. You're wearing the ring, oh, Debbie. Well, now, trust works both ways. If you won't trust me enough to tell me what this is all about, well, perhaps you'd better take the ring back right now. All right. All right, Debbie, I'll tell you. If you must know what I've been doing, well, I'm a baseball player. That's not very funny, Vernon. If you don't want to tell me the truth, just say so. Look, buy a morning newspaper. Look at the sports page. Big headline, Kelly to pitch against Boston. Well, I'm Kelly. Oh, you are. And I'm Matahari. When you're ready to tell me the truth, Vernon, you know just where to find me. Debbie, Debbie, wait, please. Well, I hope you like the seats, Dr. Greenlee. Best in the ballpark, you know. That's what happens when you're with a man who owns the ball club. (laughs) Well, this is fine, Mr. Stone, just fine. Do you know this is the first baseball game I've seen in years? Sit back and relax, Doctor. Enjoy yourself. I'll relax after you've agreed to give that donation to the college research fund. (laughs) I'm afraid this is going to be an expensive afternoon for me. I certainly hope so, Mr. Stone. Uh, Who's uh, pitching today? Why, the best pitcher we have, Kelly. That's Kelly warming up over there. Oh? He's, uh, he's good, is he? Good. He's incredible. A strange thing, Dr. Greenleaf. He doesn't act like a ball player at all. I'd like to have you meet him. Oh, uh, Lanigan. Yeah, Mr. Stone. Tell Kelly to stop by, will you? There's someone here I'd like him to meet. Say that again, will you, Kelly? I don't think I heard you right. I said that I, I can't pitch today, Mr. Dolan. Why, you prima donna, that's mutiny. I'll slap the biggest, fattest fine on you in history. Well, I'd rather you wouldn't, but it won't make any difference if you do. Brooker! Brooker, get out there and warm up. He won't get away with this. I'll find him. I'll suspend him. I'll... You got him wrong, Jimmy. Oh, Kelly's kind of wacky, all right, but he ain't no prima donna. Then what's he walking out of the game for? I don't know. Mr. Stone tells me some guy wants to meet him. Kelly starts walking toward the grandstand, and all of a sudden, he ducks like he'd seen a ghost. Just wait till this game's over. Just wait till I get... Now, look, if you get tough with him, there's no telling what he'll do. We got along without him before, didn't we? Look, let me talk to him. Let me see what it's all about. It wasn't just a whim, Monk. I had to get off the field. I saw someone in the stands. You mean a copper or something? No, no. Just just someone who knew me before I joined the ball club. But you gotta take that chance, kid. It's liable to happen anytime. I know. And when it does, I'll have to do exactly what I'm doing now. I'll see you at the hotel. <laughs> Monk? Come in. You can turn on the light. Why aren't you asleep? Getting your rest. I can't sleep. Well, I just come from Stone and Dolan. They had me on a carpet so long, I got falling arches. You take a walk and I get pulled out. Mm. I guess I'm fired, huh? No, they're letting you off. You can thank your old Uncle Monk. Well, then what happened, Kelly? Was it that guy in the stands? Oh, it doesn't matter. It's my girl I'm worried about. She's going to find out about me. Why? How come? Because I told her. Only she didn't believe me. But she's bound to know, and so is her father. Her father? If he ever learns the truth, I'm really finished. He'll never take me back, and I can't say I blame him after what I said. Uh, What did you say? Oh, I was desperate. I I certainly gave him a false impression. He thought I was doing something entirely different. That's the only reason he gave me my leave of absence. Leave of absence? Where did he have you, in a pen or something? It doesn't matter. You're going to find out, so there's no point in going on. Look, I'm not your girl. Maybe she won't find out. you got to wait and see. Wait and see what? Well, if she gets the idea you ain't revving her, what will she do? She'll come out to your next game and see for herself. Hmm. Well, it adds up, don't it? Of course it does, and that's just why I'm not going to pitch anymore. Oh, why didn't I say that? I'm making a waste of waste. Now, look, Kelly, you've got to think of us, too, the rest of the team. we got a chance to win the pennant, maybe even a World Series. That means something to a lot of guys. Yes. Yes, I suppose it does. Well? Well, give me a little time, Monk. I'm too upset even to think. I'll try to do whatever's right. Forgive me for being nosy, Debbie, but uh, 
Would you mind telling me what you're doing? Oh, just reading the newspaper, Father. The sports paint? You? Well, I was interested in a wild statement someone made. Father, do you need the car today? I I think I'll drive into St. Louis. Oh, another shopping spree? No. No, all I want to do is some looking around. <laughs> Whatever happened to Kelly the other day, he's certainly over it now. That's the tenth man he struck out. Yeah, he's doing okay, Mr. Stone. Come on, Kelly, come on. Get this guy. Oh, what I told you, pitching lady, his name's Kelly. Oh, Mr. that Vernon, it is. I see him. Come on, Vernon, strike him out. No, lady, Kelly. I told you his name's Kelly. So did he, but I didn't believe him. Oh, Vernon, Vernon, that's wonderful. Uh, just a second, miss. Where do you think you're going? Well, in there. I want to see Mr. Kelly. I'm a friend of his. That's the dressing room. You better wait for him here. Oh, oh yes, of course. Hey, it's you. You're Kelly's girl. Well, ain't she? Well, who are you? Jumping Jupiter, some luck I seen you face. Come on, sister, we're grabbing a cab. Hey, wait a minute. I want to see him. I'll tell you all about it in the cab, lady. Just get out of here. So you're Mr. Lanigan. Well, I'm glad to know you. You know, honey, I see you the first thing every morning and the last thing every night. You do? Yeah. Kelly's got your picture right on top of the dresser. You and his bottle of hair tonic. <laughs> hair tonic? Anyway, if Kelly knew you or anybody else was watching him, he'd walk right out of the ballpark. Why, he done it just the other day. Oh, that must have been the day my father was there. And if he blows, well, the team's dead and so is he. You don't want to hate a guy just when he's right on top. Or do you? Oh, no, of course not. Look, you want to come to the games? Okay. I'll send you passes. Only don't let Kelly see you. I'll sit way up in the farthest corner, Mr. Lanigan. And you're not sore at the guy? No, I'm not sore. But it is quite a shock to fall in love with a college professor and then have him turn out to be a big league pitcher. <laughs> so that's what he is. A professor. Well, now, is that so surprising? Certainly. On account of that's exactly what I thought he was. <laughs> but Vernon... Oh, maybe I shouldn't have told you that. You know something... This Kelly you're bringing in is quite a character, but he sure can pick things. Hey, Brewers take pennant. Kelly won 30th game of season. St. Louis to face New York in World Series. Some World Series. You ever see anybody as lucky as them New Yorks? It should have been all over with yesterday. Instead, they tie it up three games each. Why, right now, Rick... Hey, Kelly, ain't you listening? This bottle, Monk, it's empty. Have you been using my hair tonic? Hair tonic? Oh, yeah, I I'm growing a whole new crap. Ain't you even noticed the difference? I had another bottle, but that's gone too. Monk, this is serious. Without that bottle, I I'm sunk. It's just hair tonic, ain't it? Never mind. What did you do with it? Well, I, I give it to Jimmy Dolan. He's getting a little thin on top. Jimmy, I've got to get it now, right away. Sorry to bother you, Mr. Dolan, oh, but I... Oh, you, Kelly. In oh. here, in here. I'm just washing up. Well, kid, how do you feel? I hope you ain't nervous like I am. I'm, I'm counting on you. Well, at the moment, I am rather nervous. You see, my... A life... few hours from now, we'll be world champs. <laughs> or New York will. Yes, that's right, Mr. Dolan. Mr. Dolan, I know this is going to sound a little... Look hard. at my hair, will you? Even my hair's nervous. Yeah. Keeps jumping up. <laughs> Must be a lot of electricity in the air. Well, what's on your mind, Kelly? Well, it's my hair tonic. Huh? Did Monk give you a bottle of my hair tonic? Well, yeah, yeah, that's right. I just now tried a little. I was losing a few. Mike said it'd grow hair on a billiard ball. Mm. Kind of an insult. Well, you see, it, it's a very rare solution, Mr. Dolan, and I cannot duplicate it. Well, okay, okay, I'll pay you for it. Oh, no, much? no, it isn't that. It's my last bottle, and I... I need it. <laughs> you need it. With that mop... Who do you think you're playing for, the House of David? Well, it's, it's just a little idiosyncrasy of mine, and sort of a superstition, and especially today. You well, know. I've heard of everything from a rabbit's foot to an elk's tooth. But hair tonic, <laughs> that's a new one. Please, Mr. Dolan, have you got it? Sure, I got it. Oh, right here in the medicine cow. Oh, 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 no. No, no. <laughs> We pause now for station identification. 
This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a moment, we'll bring you Act Three of It Happens Every Spring. Our guest tonight is blonde, blue-eyed, and 22. At that tender age, Miss Jean Ruth is a veteran of more than one stage hit and has appeared in several pictures. I take it you like Hollywood, Jean. Very much, Mr. Kennedy. And it was such fun to be on the Paramount lot when they were shooting the Hal Wallace production of My Friend Irma. (laughs) All of us were weak from laughing when they'd finished. I can understand why. Our neighbor on the radio is equally entertaining on the screen. The picture, My Friend Irma is based on that popular Lever Brothers Company radio program, which follows immediately after the Lux Radio Theater. Marie Wilson, of course, plays Irma. Well, who else? Having created her on the air, Marie just had to do the movie. And John Lund, with his flair for comedy, is perfect as Al. And fans will love that brand-new laugh team, Martin and Lewis. And Diana Lynn is Jane, Irma's long-suffering girlfriend. She's Jane to a T, Mr. Kennedy. I used to love to visit Diana on the set, and she's a darling. We talked about everything under the sun, including the best way to keep your skin nice for camera close-ups. Oh, of course, you know Diana's a luxe girl, Mr. Kennedy. One of the loveliest. The real American beauty type. So fresh and natural-looking. Yes, and her complexion is really beautiful. Diana told me she wouldn't dream of neglecting her luxe soap facials. She says that creamy lather gives her skin just the care it needs. Yes, Lux Soap Care is so gentle. No wonder screen stars depend on it for million-dollar complexion. It's wonderful, the softer, smoother look it gives your skin. Oh, I know, because I use Lux Toilet Soap every day. Thank you, Miss Jean Ruth, for reminding us that this beauty soap with the delicate perfume is the choice of lovely women everywhere. So, if you haven't tried it... Get a supply of fragrant white Lux toilet soap tomorrow. The curtain rises on the third act of It Happens Every Spring, starring Ray Milland as Vernon Simpson and Colleen Townsend as Debbie. Well, the World Series is tied three games to three. And the issue will be decided this afternoon when Vernon Simpson, the year's most sensational pitcher, faces New York. Unfortunately, all Vernon's skill was contained in a little bottle marked hair tonic. But the bottle just smashed in Jimmy Dolan's wash basin. And Vernon's career as a pitcher has gurgled down the drain. Miles away from St. Louis, in the Greenleaf home, Debbie's in something of a spot going around here like the cat who just swallowed the canary. You're a grown girl, Debbie, and you're quite entitled to live your own life. It's just that, that father and, and I... These were we... trips you've been making. Well, Debbie, where have you been going? To St. Louis. Why? To see Vernon, father. Vernon? Well, what has he got to say for himself? Well, I, I don't know. I haven't talked to him. That is, not for some time. Oh, Debbie, you're being very difficult. Well... All right, I'll tell you. Now, Father, you're going to get terribly angry, but, well, I guess you'll both have to find out sooner or later. Here, look at this. Uh Well? Read it, Mother, the headline. Dolan gambles on Kelly to Cup World Series. Mixed up in gambling, huh? (laughs) Who's Dolan? Who's Kelly? Well, you should know who Kelly is, Father. Oh, Oh, yes, yes. The pitcher, Mr. Stone, wanted me to meet that time. Well, well, Kelly's more than a pitcher, Father. He, he's Vernon. What? Vernon? Vernon Simpson? Now, now, don't get excited, Father. Oh, no, it's impossible. Well, Alfred, don't you have anything to say? I think it's outrageous that he never pitched here for the varsity. Oh, oh Father. Father, then you don't mind. Well, of course I mind. He lied to me, didn't he? he left his classes here, left his laboratory to, to, to play baseball. What are you going to do, Alfred? Do? I'm going into St. Louis and see that ball game. Oh, they're all sold out, dear. But it just happens that a friend of mine, a Mr. Monk Lanigan, has given me some tickets. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen, top of the eighth inning in this deciding game of a neck-and-neck World Series. The score remains six to six, but something has happened to Kelly. He's definitely not himself today. He's been in trouble constantly, but those St. Louis hitters have come back strong to save him. Well, he's towing the rubber now. 
Hopkins at the plate. Marconi on second. Here comes the pitch. It's a hit. It's a clean single right through shortstop. Marconi scores, and Hopkins is safe on first. And listen to that crowd. Isn't he, dear? Why, he threw the ball and made it hit the bat. Oh, no, Mother, no. No, he's not doing fine at all. Oh, I can't understand it. What's happening? New York leads now 7-6. to six. There are two outs, but Kelly's in real trouble again. And there goes Mont Lanigan up. Mount, 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 Mount. How about it, kid? Where's your huh? I haven't got any more, Monk. It's gone. You see this little pad in my glove? Huh? What about the little pad? Dry as a bone, not a drop left. I'm just a sandlot pitcher again. What are you talking about? Are you feeling all right? I feel awful. Well, look steady down, kid. So they hit a few. There's seven men behind you. They can handle it. They're a great ball club. They better be. Come on, come on, play ball. Again, it's a strike as Wilson lets a fastball get by him. I don't know what Monk Lanigan told Kelly, but Kelly's pitched two successive strikes now. And here comes the next one. And he struck him out. Wilson goes down, swinging in the side, retired. But it's another run for New York, and they're out in front, 7-6. to six. Here you are, Kelly. Here's your jacket. Now sit down and quit worrying. Why, well, just get some hits. This ball game ain't over yet. I wish it were. So your hop ain't waking. You and I know it, but them New York batters don't. They go up there thinking they're going to strike out like they've been doing all season. I got to use psychology. It's going to take more than psychology, Monk. Keep bluffing them, see? Just give me a... Hello, boy! It's a hit, a hit! If I were intelligent, I'd ask Jimmy Dolan to take me out. But I'm not going to do it. I hope he lets me stay. Now you don't. What happened out there? What happened? Tony just knocked a double. Richard's on third. If Tony gets home, he got that game in the back. Come on, baby! Monk, I may not win. Don't be too sure. But I'll go down trying, even if we do. Well, you quit talking about losing. We got two men on. Hit it, fight it, knock it out of the box. You can do it, kid. And there it goes. It's up against the fence. Richard scores, and Bevan is coming in, too. St. Louis is ahead again, eight to seven. With a long fly to center field that retires the side. But St. Louis had a big inning. Those two runs can settle this World Series. Jimmy Dolan's boys have just three more men to retire, and they won themselves the highest honors in baseball. And looking down to the St. Louis dugout, it appears that manager Dolan is going to let Kelly stay in the game. Come on, come on, come on. Let's get out there. It's your game, Kelly. Win or lose. Thanks, Mr. Dolan. All you got to do is hold them, kid. Good luck. Monk. Monk, wait a minute. Huh? Take off your cap. What's eating, kid? Your head. I... I just want to rub it. You want to you wanna rub my head? Well, maybe there's still a little left on it. Oh, Kelly, don't go wacky now. Not now, please. It's all right, Mark. It's just for luck. All right, come on. You mean to say the St. Louis is ahead again? Oh, yes, Mother, yes. Eight to seven. Oh. Now we're Vernon can only contain them. Retire the side, Vernon. Retire the side. He hits the first. He's out. Davis is out. Kelly's hit the long handle. The ball game is over. But that's an awful big if right now as Aaron walks up to the plate. He's had two hits already. Kelly's rubbing up the ball now, kneading into his glove as he usually does. He gets a signal from Lanigan. Goes into the stretch. And here it comes. And there it goes. It's a hit. A line drive right down the ball line that Richard leaps for but couldn't get. Aaron's not stopping at first. He's trying for two. There's a slide. And he's late. He's in there with a double. with Aaron on second. Aaron's a potential dying run. Out of the mound, Kelly's wiping his forehead. He throws the rubber now. Looks at the runner on second. Makes the pitch. And there it goes. And it's a long one. Hanford is running for it. So is Dixon. It's far out in right field. And it may be. It may. No, no. Hanford's got it. Oh, Hanford practically climbed that right field wall. He jumped into the air right against the wall. And he popped the ball. Oh, what a game, ladies and gentlemen. Kelly is again saved by the storybook support he's been getting, and he's grimly hanging on to that one-run lead. Two out now. A man on second base, and blockbuster Marks comes to bat. Marks has had three hits off Kelly this afternoon. And this is your ball game right here, folks. Top of the ninth, two men out, a man on second base, and the potential winning run at the plate. And here's Kelly's pitch. It's a strike. Right one as Marks takes a perfect swing at a slow curveball. Kelly looks at second base. Aaron is taking a lead there, trying to worry him. Kelly rubs the ball. He's looking at Flanagan. He stretches, and the pitch. It's a hit, a terrific liner over Kelly. No, no, it's not a hit. Kelly caught the ball. A miraculous catch, and the ball game is over. Kelly's won his own game, and St. Louis wins the World Series. Hey, Kelly, Kelly, how come you ain't with the boys? Go on in the dressing room. I just broke out with the beer. In a minute, Mr. 
Mr. Dolan. <laughs> so you're the guy I call the crackpot. Oh, I want to shake hands with you, Kelly. Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks. Oh, hey, what is this? Let me look at that hand. How's it feel? Well, it, it's rather painful. When you caught that ball, huh? Come on, we better get that x-rayed. Hey, Monk, find the doc, will you? We'll be in the examining room. Uh, how's your feel, kid? Uh, doc, fix shimp, okay? All right, son. Oh, it's not too bad. Where'd Doc go? I, um, I don't know. Well, what did he say when you and Dolan talked to him? Monk, you're stalling. Now, what is it? Oh, stalling. Listen, I want to tell you something. I've been playing baseball since Hector was a pup. But what's it got me? I mean, it don't matter how long you're up there. It's what you do. Oh, you've done all right. Well, I'm talking about you. You had a season, Kelly. A season like nobody ever had before. Well, I guess I was lucky. Why, you could pitch for 20 years. You'd never do no better. You've done it all, kid. You know, you've got nothing to look forward to. Now, what's this all about? What did the doctor say? Uh, he uh, says you're all washed up. Your hands, you can't pitch no more. Oh. Well, I never dreamt my career would end this way. You and me both. I ain't never gonna forget it. I'm gonna spend the rest of my life going around bragging how Kelly was my roommate. Well, I, I guess I'll go on to the station, Monk. I can get a train in 30 minutes. Well, hey, give me a bag. I'm going with you. <laughs> Now, look, you leave me here for you, see? You write me a letter. Oh, sure. I'll write. What do you figure you're going to do, kid? I don't know. I'd like to get my old job back at the college, but I don't think there's much chance of that. No, I know. No, not after the way I left and what I've been doing since. Oh, jumping Jupiter, you ain't made it, nobody or nothing. All you done was play ball. And I only did it to get enough money to marry my girl, but even so, I haven't much hope. But do you ought to know that? I don't get it. It don't make no sense to me. Well, a lot of things don't make sense, Monk. I was a chemistry teacher. I can tell you that now. And the sum of money I received for teaching science to the youth of this state for an entire year was a little less than I got this afternoon. Tossing a five-ounce sphere past a young man holding a wooden stick. But that ain't right. If it weren't for professors teaching kids, everybody turned out to be dumb clucks like me. Oh. You're doing all right. Oh. I hope you keep on. Thanks, Kelly. Well, I guess I'd better be moving. Uh, how's the hand feel now? Oh, it's fine, fine. Monk, you know, I, I never had many friends, but you've been a real one. You've done a lot for me, and I, well, I just want to say that I just don't know how to say what I want to say. Me neither, so don't leave us try. Well, I'll get in touch with you, Monk, as soon as things are straightened out. So long, kid. So long. She gave me her phone number. I know she did. Yeah, yeah, that's right here. Debbie Greenleaf, West Lake, 8813. I hope she's back home by now. She's got to be home. But Debbie, Debbie, I, I just don't understand. You being here and all these people. Oh, Ernie, you are so wonderful, darling. I'm proud of you. We're all proud of you. You mean you know... And they know? Everybody knows? Well, of course. All afternoon, oh. we've been rooting for you like mad. Oh, Vernon, that catch you made in the ninth inning. Oh, your hand. Your hand, it's all bandy. It's all right, Debbie. Oh, but it's terrible. Monk said you'd never pitch again. Monk? Well, yes, he, he phoned the house. Oh, we're pals, Vernon. He even got his tickets for the game. Mother and father and... Father? Uh, yes, son. Oh... Oh, jumping Jupiter, then you know, too. Yes, Vernon, I know all about it. Oh. And what happened to your hop today? Oh, I, I wanted to talk to you, Dr. Greenleaf, to try to explain. I mean about my old job. Do you think there's any chance at all? You know better than to ask me that. As a matter of fact, Dr. Fuller's already taken your place. Oh, he has? Yes, that's what I thought. Well, I don't blame you. You see, the uh, owner of that ball club, Mr. Stone... Well, he's given us the money for the research laboratory. And you're the only man he let us put in as director. Oh, Vernon. Darling, aren't you going to say something? I wonder if that stuff really would grow hair. <laughs> the stands are still cheering them. 
performances of tonight's stars, and here are Ray Milland and Colleen Townsend for a curtain call. Ray, I suppose you'll be leaving tonight for the World Series. Well, not exactly, Bill. I know it's hard to believe, but both the Yankees and the Dodgers seem to think they can win without me. I suppose Casey Stengel figures he can muddle through with, with fellas like Joe DiMaggio. Well, just in case he's listening, I want to say in all modesty, Casey, I am available. <laughs> well, while Ray is throwing a curve to Casey Stengel, I want to ask Colleen Tone Townsend about her recent tour of Veterans Hospital. Well, it was really a thrilling experience, Mr. Keeley. The boys in the hospitals gave us a wonderful reception. I'm sure they're always glad to see a Lutz girl as lovely as you are, Colleen. Well, thank you. Naturally, I take Lux soap with me on a trip. It's always been my complexion care. I wonder if I should wire Casey. <laughs> oh, Ray, <laughs> let's face it. You struck out. Oh, well. What's the play next week, Bill? Next week, we guarantee a home run, Ray, because our play is RKO's smash hit, Mr. Blanding's Bill's His Dream House. And the stars will be Cary Grant and Irene Dunn. <laughs> the motion picture comedy delighted audiences everywhere. And next Monday night, Irene Dunn and Cary Grant build their dream house right here. A wonderful show, Bill. Good night. Good night. Good night and thank you. <laughs> Viva Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Irene Dunn and Cary Grant in Mr. Blanding's Bill's His Dream House. This is William Keeley saying goodnight to you from New York City. Radoland appears with the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, producers of Song of Surrender, starring Wanda Hendricks and McDonald Carey. Colleen Townsend appears with the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of Prince of Foxes, starring Tyrone Power. Heard in tonight's cast were Ted DeCorsia as Monk, Wally Mayer as Dolan, Ed Begley as Stone, and Bill Johnstone as Greenlee. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Louis Silver. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear Mr. Blanding Builds His Dream House, starring Cary Grant and Irene Dunn. <laughs> Spry, it's a new spry, a better than ever spry. You'll be a better cook when you use spry. Spry in your baking pan, spry in your frying pan. You'll be a better cook when you use spry. Now get better pies than ever with new, better than ever spry. Any filling tastes super delicious in a tender, flaky pie crust made with new spry. Why? Because pure new spry is blander, creamier, a sure, supremely delicate nut sweet pastry. Tomorrow, get a thrifty three-pound can of new, better-than-ever Spry. Another fine product of Lever Brothers Company. You'll be a better cook when you use Spry. Be sure to listen next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Mr. Blanding Builds His Dream House, starring Irene Dunn and Cary Grant. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows over these same stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.